Poor Fader lived up to all the hype. And we are so glad that we saw Poor Fader away from the N14. It was a great visit. We were just leaving Pof Adar here and if you look at the map we were heading home which is all the way to Strand which was going to be around about a 760 kilometer track for us but we were going to stop off at a little place outside of Springbok called Karolesberg first to do a bit of exploration over there. At the beginning of this video, um, I would like to say a few things. Number one, thank you for joining us on this trip. It was fantastic. The Namakwa land region is so much more than flowers and the landscape was spectacular from beginning to end. Number two, thank you for bearing with us through our sound issues. Um, we apologized on screen various times, but we saw that many of you missed it. So in short, I'd just like to say that unbeknownst to us, our sound already started giving issues on the second day of our travels. And we only realized it in Karolesberg, and we'll show you exactly where, uh, on day seven. And uh, although we had wished many times uh, since then that we had found it out earlier in the week, in hindsight, we're pretty grateful because once we got home, we ordered our new mic uh, setup and that took seven days to arrive in Strand. So there was just no way that we would have been able to get it while we were traveling. And we were blissfully unaware. And had we known it, we wouldn't have uh, enjoyed it as much as we did. So when we got back home and Curtis started editing and um, the sound was a complete and utter mess with scratchiness, complete loss of sound, as we now know, the uh, connection was making contact and then not making contact. We had two choices, and one was to either upload our spectacular footage of the Namakoland region and work around the sound issues with voiceovers and uh, background music and background sounds and such, and the other option was not to upload our footage at all. But these are our memories as well, uh, these videos. So we decided to opt for uh, working around the sound issues. And um, we were very frustrated. And so were you. He showed me some of the comments of support, um, some of the emails and messages. We really appreciate that. Thank you for sticking by us through this. And uh, you can look forward to a new and exciting trip very soon. A um, little bit different this time, but um, hopefully our sound issues will be resolved. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you to all of you. Earlier in the week on our travels, we visited two other copper mining towns, Okip and Nababip. And there the locals told us about a third town, a copper mining town, which was Karolesberg. And we'd never planned on visiting this little town. So on our way back now, we decided we're actually going to stop off and visit Karolesberg and uh, see what it looked like. We spoke to someone in the street and they told us something very interesting and we'll show you later what they told us.
We thought we'd drive up closer to this building to see if maybe there's a sign, but there wasn't any, and uh, we assumed that it was accommodation units uh, for the mine workers or mining contractors from outside areas. So the main reason we came to Karolisberg is that we were really so inquisitive about these copper mines. We wanted to get closer and see what they, how they operated. And we spoke to someone in the town and they pointed us down this road. But as you can see, we got stuck here while there's no entry. So we turned around and later we spoke to someone and they told us that um, it was a wise decision because the public's not allowed to go down to the mine anymore. When we told you we're going to get back to you about what that person in the street told us, well, this is what that person told us. We asked him, what is there to see in Karolisberg? And that guy told us, pointed to the mountain and said, Simon van der Stel's copper mine. And we had a mission to go and find this mine and yeah, we're arriving at it. Now that looks like a, a hole into the mountain there. And so does that over there. And then that top one with a fence around it is definitely a shaft into the mount side of the mountain. And there's the two walls that you were talking about. Yeah, what would their purpose have been? I have no idea. Could be retaining walls. Below that top one, you can also see that they dug out there. Yes, you can. So at this exact point in time is when we realized for the first time that our sound was a problem. Okay, so we had learned that uh, Karolisberg was very well known for its rich copper mining history, but we didn't know about Simon van der Stel's involvement until the gentleman pointed us to the mine site. Um, we read up about it while we were there actually and learned that in 1685 him and a party came and they actually came to explore for gold deposits but they found copper deposits instead. They promptly sunk a shaft and this um, mine with the fence around is what remains of Simon van der Stel's original copper mine. We couldn't believe that we were looking at a mine that was over 330 years old. That was unreal to us. The roads weren't quite possible to get to the various places they had dug. So this is the closest that we were able to get by vehicle.
be honest, while we were driving through the roads of Karulesberg, I found the town to be extremely neat and clean. Hardly any litter anywhere. The gardens were neat and tidy. The houses were well kept. I really, really enjoyed driving through Karulesberg. So it's that time of the week again? Sadly so. Yeah, we are here in Springbok filling up with petrol and then we are going to be heading home to Strand. Crazy amount of these side tippers on the road now. Incredible, hey? Wow. So they drive the all up and down all day, all, every day. All day, every day. Firstly, the sky is amazing today. Yeah. <laughs> Secondly, we stuck behind this side tipper truck carrying ore. Yes. We would imagine from that, what mine? Kham something. Kham something. From Khamsberg mine, we're getting to passing now. Lots of them on the road today. And they slow us down somewhat. Yep. We get stuck behind them. But it's their job, one can't blame them. Oh no, absolutely. Like 
long road this, eh? Yes. It's always a long road home, babe. Yeah, it is, eh? Just go busy the filling station. Yes. Lots of people going away or going home. <laughs> <laughs> Look how pretty this is. Ducy. Just in time, they close in 25 minutes. Serious. Me too. The wind's only bumping. Eh? Wow. Did you get everything we wanted? Well, I hope so. I mean, it's just good. It looks like it. Yeah. Go ahead. Is it good? First time we've eaten today, really. Yep, yep. Good. Is that big piece of meat?
kind of still high in the sky. Yep, that's true. Fueled up and ready to go. Sweet home. <laughs> Can you believe it? It's been a long day. What can I say? This was an incredible trip. Fascinating the places we saw and they were so isolated. I would like to ask you to subscribe down below, give us a thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed these videos and we'll see you in the next episode.